Stepping into the Wright's home takes you into the late 1800s in which visitors get a glimpse of how one of the most prosperous families in Evansville lived. From the beautiful golden walls and parquet floor of the entrance hall, the gorgeous drawing room with its golden accents, the indoor plumbing in several rooms of the house, and a clothes dryer in the basement, all attest to the family's wealth. Even today, when you visit the Wright's home, one can feel the history and imagine the elegance of Evansville's upper class. The Wright's Home, a beautiful illustration of the French Second Empire architecture, is now a museum in downtown Evansville. It was initially the home of John Augustus Wright's and his family. In 1836, Wright's came to the United States from Prussia at the age of 21. That he came to America, John Augustus came to America when he was quite young. Um, he had been uh, educated in Eschlo. Um, which is um, in Dorla, Prussia, which is now Germany. He started his new life in Louisville, Kentucky, but soon came to Evansville for better business opportunities. He went to work at a local planning mill. However, when the planning mill caught fire, Wrights had managed to save up enough money to start his own lumber mill, which eventually gave him his fortune. In 1839, John Augustus Wrights married his wife Gertrude and had ten children. His eldest sons, Francis Joseph Wrights and John Augustus Wrights Jr. later went into the lumber industry with their father. In 1871, the Wrights family home was built for John, his wife, and some of his children. After their parents' deaths in the 1890s, Francis Joseph and four of his sisters took over the house and completely redecorated the interior of the home, giving it the appearance the visitors see today. The redecorated rooms reflect the popular styles of places the family had traveled. This is evident by the drastic differences in the colors, fabrics, patterns, and furniture used in each room. The, the Wrights family um, traveled. They did the grand tour, what we call the grand tour, around the world. And they um, noticed that um, the, um, the Moorish style was very popular at that time, and they had been to Spain and Portugal and Turkey. And so we have quite a bit of a Moorish design in our house. And then they were in France, and you know, you can see in the drawing room that it's very um, French. It's uh, a lot of it is a copy of what they saw in Versailles. Um, and then they also spent a lot of time in Germany. So we do have rooms that um, uh, would be like the homes would be in Germany. So their their ideas came from from the many places that they visited, and it was something that Victorian people did. When guests come to the house, they were led through the entrance hall, which displays a vast amount of beautiful architecture. There are three sets of doors that lead into the main entrance from the outside. The first are heavy wooden doors with no glass, a set of walnut panel doors, and third, a set of doors that are not near as heavy and contain beautiful stained glass windows. The first things guests notice are the stunning golden accents and wooden parquet floor of the grand entrance hall. As they enter the hallway, John might have led them into the dining room with its pineapple theme, which is the symbol for hospitality. The darker woods inside this room also make you feel more comfortable and welcome to the home. Um, the dining room is also a room that I feel is um, very beautiful and tells a story. It tells a story that there's so much decoration in that room that you not only have a feast to eat, but you have a feast for the eyes because wherever you look in the dining room, there is ornamentation in there. For bigger occasions, such as funerals or wedding parties, the drawing room would have been used. In the drawing room, there is a white and gold onyx mantelpiece from the 1893 Columbian Exposition, which was reported to have cost $15,000. At the time, this sum would have bought several working class houses in the Evansville area. The room itself also has a reoccurring theme of wooden Athena heads, which are along the crest of where the ceiling meets the wall and on the wooden furniture. Another interesting feature of this room are the mirrors that sit parallel to each other on both sides of the room. They give the effect that the mirrors go on forever. The mirror design was inspired by the Palace of Versailles and is a perfect example of how the family replicated architectural styles they had seen on vacations. Um, we have done a great deal of restoration work in here. There's quite a bit of artwork on the ceilings. And uh, we have the onyx mantelpiece in here. 
and made by the Tiffany Company. And uh, we have the Jella furniture that's original to the family. John Augustus's favorite room of the house was the study. The room has a very masculine feel and a darker setting with a more craftsman style. John spent most of his time in this room doing his work or just relaxing. Obviously the Wrights family lived in lavishness, but even the Wrights servants had beautiful parts of the house to live and work in. The kitchen, for example, is part of the home the servants would have spent their time. It has wooden tables and floors. It also has two pantries, a wet and dry pantry, as many of the homes of the time did. While every room in the Wrights home is beautiful in its own way, those rooms of the house have significant beauty and deserve recognition. Even though F.J. Wrights and his sisters received a healthy sum of money left by their parents, Francis Joseph continued to build on his family's fortune. In 1892, he became vice president of First National Bank. Later, the bank changed its name to City National Bank, and Francis Joseph became its president in 1902. When the bank changed its name to National City Bank in 1922, Wrights remained president of the bank until he retired at the age of 83. National City Bank would later become Integra Bank. Wrights also was associated with the Evansville Electric and Light Company, which would later have become Southern Indiana Gas and Electric. He also was associated with two of the first railroads in Evansville and also was one of the owners of the Crescent Furniture Company. The Wrights family is most remembered for their numerous acts of generosity. Francis Joseph Wrights made many contributions to the Evansville community until his death in 1930. They include two beautiful high schools, one of the schools, Wright's Memorial Catholic High School, was built as a memorial to his parents. It cost $900,000 when constructed in 1925. This act of generosity earned Wright's the title Commander of the Order from Pope Pius IX, making him the first person in Indiana to receive it and only the third American at the time to receive this honor. He also gave to other charities and orphanages, such as the St. Vincent's Orphanage in Vincennes for remodeling and new structures. Francis Joseph's father, John Augustus, gave money for the building of the original Sacred Heart Church in 1895 on 10th Avenue. In 1928, Francis Joseph financed the building of a new Sacred Heart Church. In 1928, when Morris Hill College relocated to Evansville, becoming Evansville's college, Wrights contributed as well. Many additional contributions went unrecorded, making it difficult to know exactly how much money he gave to his community. The Wrights Home Preservation Society was formed to help preserve and maintain the beauty of this house and was officially accepted into the National Register of Historic Places in 1973. When Francis Joseph and his sisters passed away around 1931, the house was deeded to the Daughters of Isabella, a society for Catholic women, who used it as their main home and rented rooms upstairs for income. From 1944 to 1972, it became the resident of the bishop and the office of the Evansville Diocese. During this time, few changes were made to the house, making it much easier to restore the home into the museum today. When the diocese left the home in 1972, the Junior League of Evansville bought the rights home for a single dollar and formed the preservation society we know today. The money it took to restore the home to its current condition is reported to have cost around one million dollars. Though the Wrights family has all passed away, the legacy they set forth in Evansville will forever be remembered by the people of this town. Wrights family is reflected into the communities in many ways, but the preservation of their home might have been their most unique expression. I think we should all be proud of the legacies that John Augustus Wrights and Francis Joseph Wrights gave to the community. They have shown us that they were successful businessmen, but with that success, they were very willing to give, to give back to the community that had made them very successful. Um, so th that, that is certainly a legacy um, for all of us.